If you just let go, it's a real easy ride, Daphne shouted over the whipping wind, but Sabrina wasn't convinced and held on tightly. A small beetle flew into her mouth and she spit it out, gagging. A bug flew in my mouth, Sabrina croaked. Daphne patted her hand sympathetically. Unfortunately, Hamster was still very much a passenger. Let go, Sabrina shouted again, but the sheriff shook his head defiantly. Displaying his own stubbornness, the carpet darted over the house and began to skim the top of the forest. Hamster smacked into limbs and skidded across the treetops. I'm not going anywhere, he shouted as the carpet found an opening in the forest and dove into it like a kamikaze pilot. Sabrina was sure the carpet was going to sacrifice them all to get rid of its unwanted rider. But just as it seemed they would all be splattered across the forest floor, the carpet leveled out and dragged Hamster directly over some thorny bushes. Motivated by the pain, the sheriff struggled once more to climb on board. Elvis barked at him as Daphne tried to pry his fingers from the carpet's tasseled corner. Carpet, do something, she cried. The carpet soared between several th- trees and zipped along a rocky stream and lowered itself to mere inches above the water. Dragging Hamster along the muddy banks and finally shaking him loose, he tumbled into the mud and sank up to his nose. The carpet darted back and hovered above him. The sheriff crawled out of the muck, covered in swamp goo. A small frog leaped from his shirt pocket as he wiped filth from his eyes. As the ghost darted away on the carpet, Sabrina could hear Borman and Swanheart rushing to their boss's aid. Boss, what are you fooling around in the mud for? Borman asked. Shut up! The girls soared out of the forest and high into the sky. There, Puck met them and flew alongside, laughing at the sheriff's misfortune. You keep them busy, Sabrina shouted, and the boy's mood darkened. Daphne pinched her sister. You have to talk to him like he's the leader. He needs to feel that he's important, Daphne whispered. Sabrina was stunned by her sister's perceptiveness. Sorry, Puck, I know you can handle them. And we'll be back soon with all the information you will need, Sabrina said awkwardly. We know you could kill the giant yourself right now, but a little insider information never hurts. Again, Puck puffed up with pride. Of course, probably a waste of time, but who knows? By the way, there's one more cop you have to deal with when you get there. Who? Daphne asked. A nervous little man named Ichabod Crane. Not the guy from Sleepy Hollow, Hello, Sabrina said. And that's him. Since he nearly lost his head, he gave up PTG and became a cop. I guess his idea is that he's not safer if he's around the police. He shouldn't be too much of a problem, Puck said, turning in midair and soaring away. How do you know that we could get him to do whatever we want if we pretend that he's in charge? Sabrina asked Daphne. That's what I do with you, little girl replied. You two are exactly the same. Carpet, take us to Jack, Sabrina said after she had stuck her tongue out at her sister. The carpet darted on and glided above the little town. For the first time, Sabrina could see Fairyport Lanny for what it really was, quaint. To the east of the town, the moon shone on the curve of the Hudson River and old gas lamps lined the paths of a park along the water. More lights twinkled in the center of town where dozens of groundstone buildings clustered around Main Street. Sabrina could see people having a late supper in a railway car diner and a last movie playing at a driving theater. Far off to the west of town, she could just make out the humped streets of the tree blanketed mountains. As they got closer to Main Street, the carpet began to descend, dropping nearly a dozen feet at once, and causing Sabrina's belly to flip. She looked at her sister and saw that she had wrapped her arms around Elvis and was squeezing the air out of the poor dog. They plummeted through the clouds, the girls screaming as the wind screeched past them, but just as they were feet from crashing onto the pavement, Sabrina managed to shout, Carpet, stop! And the carpet screeched to a halt. It took them several minutes, it took them several moments to realize that they hadn't died and that they were still screaming. 
When they come down, when they had calmed down, Sabrina looked around and saw that they were floating next to the window of a brick building. It had bars on it. Suddenly, a boyish-looking head with spiky blonde hair appeared. It was Jack. He had beautiful blue eyes and a round face with a button nose, but he looked tired and in desperate need of a shave. He also had a painful-looking face that had specks of dried blood around it. What is going on? Not there. Can a man get some rest when he's in prison? He shouted in a thick English accent. When he saw the girls, he lifted himself higher in order to see what they were standing on. Then he smiled. Well, young ladies, who might you be? Are you Jack? Sabrina asked. That's the name I was given, he replied with a chuckle. Be Jack? Daphne asked. As in Jack and the Bee and Star? Indeed I am, Duck. But as you can see, I am a little indisposed to be signing autographs. He laughed. We need your help, Daphne cried. Well, I don't know if you happen to have noticed, but this isn't a country club I'm relaxing in. This is the county jail. Unless you need some help making license plates, I think you've got the wrong bloke. We need your help with a giant, Sabrina said. Jack's eyes grew wide and a smile briefly lit up his features. Then he grew terribly serious and pulled his face closer to the bars. A giant, you said. He's taken our grandmother, Sabrina replied. And we want her back, Daphne added. Well, I don't blame you, the young man said. But exactly how does a human go about getting themselves in trouble with the giant? It was Sabrina and Daphne Grimm. Our grandmother is rather grim, Jack interrupted with a smug. I should have guessed. For what? He got herself in trouble with a big boy, eh? Yes, she and Mr. Kenneth both, Daphne said. Kenneth, eh? Can't say I feel sorry about that, Jack growled. So what do you want from me? We were told you were an expert on giants, Sabrina answered. We need you to tell us everything you can about how to stop this one and save our family. It's true. I am an expert on the big boys. Killed nearly 50 of them in my day, Jack boasted. The book said it was less than 20, Daphne said. Don't believe everything you read, Duck, said Jack. I've sent more than my fair share of big boys to the grave. What? There was a time when people used to call me Jack the Giant Killer. I was famous, oh yes. My name was once synonymous with bravery and daring. That was until the spell trapped me in this balmy town. What does balmy mean? Stephanie whispered to her sister. Sabrina shrugged. She was having trouble keeping up with Jack's accent. Now take it any walk I can. Do you know what the mighty Jack does for a living? Sabrina began to get nervous as the young man's face filled with rage. She knew the answer to his question, but thought her best to lie. No, I don't. I saw shoes, suits, and Harold's house, big and tall, Jack exploded. A lovely sales boy. I sat with kings. I drank the finest wines in the world. I filled my belly with exotic meats, and I socialized with the world's most interesting people. And now, because of that cursed spell that keeps us here, I spend my days measuring inseams and helping people pick out insoles. We're sorry, Daphne said. At least that's what I used to do. Today I quit, Jack bragged. I have a feeling Jack, the giant killer, his luck is going to change. So how do you end up in jail? Sabrina asked. That miserable cur, charming, Jack raged, runs this town of its own, like it's his own personal kingdom, and wants to keep the rest of us as peasants. Did he give you that did he give you the fat lip? Fat lip? asked Sabrina. No. I had a disagreement with some business associates, Jack said, wiping his wound with a bloody handkerchief. No worries. You can't keep a bloke like me down, can you? No, sorry, Bob. You can count on that. Jack, I hate to interrupt, but we've really got to hurry. Is there anything you can tell us that will help? Sabrina said. Oh, I'm going to be a big help to you, ladies, he said with a confident grin. Just as soon as the two of you break me out of jail. Chapter 8 
Sabrina gasped. You want us to help you break out of prison? Jack nodded his head. Quite right. How are we supposed to do that? Sabrina asked. Easy. You go in through the front door and distract the guard. Then the little one here will hit him the gob with a club or something and snatch his keys. I'm seven years old. I can't hit someone with a club and not in the gob. Whatever that is, Daphne cried. Sure you can. Double T Crank isn't going to put up a fire. He's deaf in the head and jumpy as a flea. If he does happen to pull up a fight, all you have to do is hit him in the shins. He'll fall over like a sack of potatoes, Jack replied. She's not hitting anyone for club, Sabrina said. Well, if saving your granny and her pal isn't that important to you, I can just stay in a nick. Sabrina looked into Jack's hopeful face. How could this odd little man actually be the key to Granny and Mr. Kenneth's survival? It just didn't seem possible. But on the other hand, the note Granny had left told them that the mirror would have all the answers they needed. After two days of disbelieving everything the old woman had told her, Sabrina didn't feel like being proven wrong again, especially when so much was riding on the outcome. So, girls, what is it going to be? If I could do it myself, I would have already, but a Bobby took my lock-picking kit when he put the cuffs on me. Smart on his part, too. There is a door Jack can't open. You say there's only one deputy? Yes, Jack insisted. And he happens to be Ichabod Crane, the guy from The Legend of Sleepy Hollow. Not so much The Legend as a true story, but yes. We'll get you out of here, but we're going to do it in my way, Sabina declared. No one is going to get hurt. Deal? Jack frowned, but thrust his hand out the window. He shook Sabrina's and smiled. So, boss, what's the plan? First, I'm going to need your shot. When Sabrina opened the front door to the police station, her heart was pounding faster than it had ever pounded. They were taking a huge chance, especially with Sheriff Hamster and his deputies searching for them. By now, Crane had to know the girls were on the loose. Two kids dressed in bright orange monkey with sweatshirts flying around on a magic carpet with a 200-pound great day weren't going to be too hard to spot. On the upside, what they were about to do was the sneakiest thing the girls had ever tried. It was nice to be challenged every once in a while. When the door swung open, Sabrina half expected to find hamsters Foreman and swine hunt waiting for them, but luckily the station was empty except for a tall, painfully thin man with a gigantic hooked nose, thin lips, and an Adam's apple that bumped up and down. Ichabod Crane looked just like the story had described him, and he was fast asleep, sitting in a chair with his feet propped up on his desk. Sabrina found the light switch and flipped it off, drowning the room in murkiness. She gestured behind her, and the carpet drifted in, hurrying to feet off the ground and carrying its own headless horseman, Daphne, sitting on Elvis's back and wearing Jack's shirt so that her head was hidden inside. He's going to figure this out, Daphne whispered. It's our only shot, Sabrina replied. She crouched down behind an empty desk and cupped her hands around her mouth. She used her feet to kick the door shut and it slammed so loudly he, the poor man fell back all over his chair. Once he was on his hands and knees, he rubbed his eyes and looked around in the dark. Hey, you turn the light, he called in a whiny, high-pitched voice. Crane, Sabrina moaned in the deepest voice she could produce. The carpet slowly drifted across the room, carrying a tellus passenger. Ew, the PT cried in horror. You're supposed to be gone. I have returned, Sabrina croaked. The dark room was creating a very believable hot nightmare. Crane scurried around the room, hiding behind desks and chairs the best he could. Crane, you cannot hide from me. I am the headless horseman. I see all. The deputy screamed and continued to crawl, but a carpet hunted him slowly around the room. I'm a law enforcement officer now, Crane shouted, trying to muster all his courage. A defender of the peace. I can arrest you for 